I have a real dislike of cables being visible around the home, so when we last decorated our living room about five years ago, I took the opportunity at the time to hide as much of our AV kit as possible. So the Apple TV, amplifier, Xbox and all the various cables connecting it all together went inside a cabinet. My wife chose a nice spacious wooden cabinet and I immediately cut some massive holes in the back of it so as all of those cables could easily run to the kit inside. I even got a now discontinued Logitech Harmony Elite remote which came with a couple of IR blasters so as it could all be controlled without the need to have the cupboard doors open. I was very pleased with myself and it looked a lot tidier but there was one major problem, it got seriously warm inside that cupboard. I had an old original Raspberry Pi lying around so I rigged up a temperature sensor and a USB fan to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO connectors. Using a Python script on the Pi, I bodged together what was in effect a thermostatically controlled fan. As the cupboard heats up, the fan comes on to vent that heat out, and as the temperature starts to drop again, the fan turns off. This was working great until about a month ago. The SD card in the Raspberry Pi died and went to that special place that all overused SD cards eventually go to, and my fan controller was no more. But this gave me an opportunity to re-geek the solution. I use Home Assistant as my home automation solution and there's an amazing add-on for Home Assistant called ESP Home. This add-on is designed to help you make and use your very own Internet of Things devices. You can create Wi-Fi connected sensors for things like temperature, air quality, distance, energy monitoring, you name it. And you can also connect actuators like lights, relays, switches, and in my case, a fan. Most ESP home projects are not for beginners because they inevitably end up needing a soldering iron. But with a bit of careful planning and shopping around, you can get all the components you need with pre-soldered headers and use what are called DuPont cables to connect them all together. ESP Home provides all of the services you need to get your sensors and actuators talking over your Wi-Fi network back to Home Assistant. You create a little YAML file defining things like the type of ESP microcontroller you have, your Wi-Fi network details, and crucially, the details of the sensors and actuators attached to your microcontroller. I already had an AC Infinity USB fan bolted to the back of my AV cabinet and a BMP280 temperature sensor. I had to order an ESP32 microcontroller, specifically this one. Um, I chose this one because while looking around at other people's projects, this particular bulb was mentioned a number of times. There's also a D1 Mini that gets a lot of love too, and I have one of those in use for another project. I'll list all of the components I used in the description and a link to my website with the full instruction, so don't worry if you can't keep up with the video. First things first, you can't just connect your USB fan straight to your microcontroller. At this point, I think I'd better just show you the wiring diagram. It's a lot easier to show you how this connects together than explain it. Um, you need to stick a little NPN transistor on the ground wire first. I've soldered mine in place to make it nice and compact, but you can just use DuPont cables and lots of electrical insulation tape. For the temperature sensor, in addition to the 3.3 volt power and ground, you also have two data connections called SCL and SDA. Let's jump to the point at which it was actually working. I found an old unused plastic battery case in the garage, so I cut a few holes in it and managed to cram all of the components inside. I made sure that the temperature sensor was sticking out of the top just to help you get a more accurate reading. Once in place inside the cupboard, I gave it a quick test by toggling the automatically created switch entity in Home Assistant, and then confirmed that the temperature sensor was indeed sending data. And finally, that fan needed automating. This one is very simple. If the temperature drops below 28.5 degrees Celsius, then the fan turns off. If it rises above 32 degrees, then the fan turns on. There's a bit of a gap between the two values in order to stop frequent toggling of the fan switch when the temperature is hovering around a particular level. And I figured out those thresholds by keeping an eye on the temperature graph for a few days. ESP Home is really fun to play with and it is very satisfying when you manage to get something working like this. But it's also quite frustrating and can be a steep learning curve, so be warned, if you do go down this rabbit hole, you're likely to lose days of your life to it. As always, I'll stick all of the code and configuration up on my website. The link will be in the description. Thank you for watching.